Despite suffering a major injury, this one-legged gym mast never gave up. All athletes have an unshakable determination towards their chosen sport. For some, it can be taken away in a moment, but those with true passion will always overcome the odds. It can be a heartbreaking experience for anyone who has to abruptly quit their passion due to physical limitations. Even when losing a limb, no one should be judged for not being able to take part in the sport they once enjoyed. People have different abilities and capabilities, but those who persevere and succeed in the face of adversity are an inspiration. Today, we will look at those athletes who achieve their goals despite losing a limb, proving that it's only our own self-limiting beliefs that can stop us from achieving. Las Vegas, Nevada is one of America's most popular tourist destinations. It's primarily known for casinos and the fact that the city is located in a desert, making it one of the hottest cities in America. Such a hot climate may make it seem like an odd birthplace for a snowboarder. However, being born in a desert didn't stop Amy Purdy from taking up the sport. Thankfully, she is someone who clearly thrives on challenges. Amy took up the sport when she was just 15 years old. For the next four years, Amy would tear up the slopes with the friends. No doubt, loving every minute of time on a trusty snowboard. But sadly, at the tender age of 19, Amy's life would take a dramatic turn. She would contract bacterial meningitis, a disease which would affect her circulatory system. The disease led Amy to suffer from septic shock. The 19-year-old was given just a 2% chance of survival, which resulted in doctors having to remove both of her kidneys and her spleen. But the biggest loss for the young snowboard came at the loss of both of her legs beneath the knees. It's fair to say that a lot of other people in Amy's position would have given up or at the very least given up the sport they love so much. But thankfully Amy isn't most people. Within just a year of her double amputation, she was already snowboarding again. In fact, Amy was back on a board just seven months after receiving her prosthetic legs. Within about five months of her being back on a board, Amy would place third in a snowboarding competition at Mammoth. Though Amy would come to realize that there weren't any prosthetics that were aimed directly at her unique needs. As the saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention. And to that end, Amy decided to build her own set of prosthetic legs. In 2003, Amy would compete in several snowboarding events across the United States with help from a grant from the nonprofit group Challenged Athletes, or CAF for short. Later that year, she became the spokesperson for the organization. In 2005, Amy co-founded Adaptive Action Sports. Seeing that there were other athletes like herself in need, she co-founded the nonprofit organization to help those suffering from physical challenges participate in high action sports. Amy has shown that she is not the type to let her disability hold her back to prove that point. In 2011 alone, Amy competed in a pair of snowboarding World Cup events, one of them taking place in France, the other taking place in Canada. In the events she placed first and third, those would not be her only achievements on the powder though. Over the next few years, Amy would take first place in the Paris Snowboard World Championships in 2012. A year later at the S Paralympic Snowboard Cross National Championships, she took second place. It was in 2014, where Amy would win a bronze in the Paralympics Games held in Russia just four years. After that in 2018, Amy would win silver in the Paralympic Games held in Pongchang, South Korea. Even after all that Amy has shown the competitive fire still burns in her, as she has proven by competing on the amazing race and dancing with the stars. Amy has continued to be an inspiration for all physically disabled athletes, and we thank her for her bravery. Be sure to keep watching to see the story of the next brave athlete. Speaking of brave athletes, if you've seen the movie Soul Surfer, Odds are you know the story of our next subject of today's video, 
Bethany Hamilton was born in Hawaii in 1990. The third child of her parents, Tom and Cherry Bethany, had a natural love of the ocean from an early age. This would lead her to the sport of surfing and it wasn't long afterwards she gained attention. When she was eight years old, Bethany would take first in the Rolson May Nahoon surfing event, which took place in Melbourne, Australia. Just months later, Bethany got her first sponsor again at just nine years old. When Bethany was 12, she won first in the Open Women's Division of the National Scholastic Surfing Association NSSA. Tragically, within a year of that event, her world completely changed while Bethany was at the beach with her friends. She decided on some early morning surfing. It was that same morning that she would become prey for a 14-foot or 4.3-meter tiger shark. The attack took her arm just below the shoulder. Thankfully, her family, friends, and father were nearby when the attack happened. Her father was able to make a tourniquet out of a rash guard. After he wrapped it around the stump that was left, they raced to the hospital. Bethany would lose 60% of her blood. Her story didn't end there. The fact that she was able to survive is incredible itself. But just as if not more amazing is the fact that just weeks after the attack, Bethany was back on a surfboard. When talking about going back into the water, Bethany told the Guardian newspaper, even though I have been attacked, my fear of losing surfing was greater than my fear of sharks. In 2004, Bethany would start competing again, using a special custom-made board. In 2004 and 2005, she won NSSA events and continues to be active in the sport, placing third in a 2016 serving competition. Before we continue, please be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell. It's a great way to stay up to date. Every time we put out new content, and it really helps us out click ding done. The one-legged gymnast who overcame all odds. Kate started training in gymnastics at the tender age of six years old. She tried a bit of this and a bit of that in an effort to see what she liked, like any young athlete. It took a little bit of time for her to find the right sport for her. After some trial and error of other sports, such as soccer and karate, she had finally found her ideal sport. You know you've got the right sport for your kid when they don't complain about having to go, they really want to go, said her mother, Barb. The sport that grabbed and held the young athlete's attention was that of gymnastics. I tried soccer, I did karate, and then I started gymnastics and that really clicked with me. I loved it. Kate herself would say, the years passed as they do, and by the time Kate was 11, she was already practicing up to 25 hours per week at the gym. Just five years into her journey, everything was going great. Or so she and her parents thought fate, it seems, would have other plans for her. As time went on, Kate started to feel more and more sick over the span of several months. It was on and off the illness, of course, affected her training. She would later say that she felt terrible all the time, had bruises and staph infections. That was enough for her parents and her to look into it. The blood test results were devastating. The diagnosis came back as myeloid leukemia, in shockingly short order. Kate went from being an athlete on the rise to a cancer patient. Sadly, this still wasn't the worst news for her. Kate started chemotherapy right away. However, the chemo also destroyed her immune system, which would prove to have other effects on her body. The worst effect was a gangrene infection in her leg. Suddenly she ended up on life support for three days. Still young Kate persevered through and would continue her treatments. Sadly, though it wouldn't be long before things got worse for Kate just after her 12th birthday, Kate would end up getting a second infection in her leg during another hospital stay, but Kate's third round of chemotherapy would result in more life-altering news. Young Kate was waiting on a bone marrow transplant. The doctors delivered the news that they had found another infection. This one in her knee joint. 
Kate and her family were left with two heartbreaking choices. Kate would either lose her leg through amputation, or she would lose her life. I can't imagine having to be in such a serious scenario at any age, let alone the age of 12. She resisted at first telling the doctors that she needed her leg for gymnastics, though it wasn't too long after when she came to her senses and decided that it was either her leg or her life. She knew then that her gymnastics life was over at that moment, or so she thought. Thankfully though, Kate had a lot of people pulling for her. One of the most important voices for her was her gymnastics coach, Denise Cooper. Denise had even said to young Kate, I've never trained a one-legged gymnast before, but I'm willing to try if you are that was all the encouragement she needed. Thankfully Kate never gave up and stuck with her dream. Losing her leg to cancer didn't force Kate to lose her love of gymnastics. Kate trained for the first time again on her 13th birthday, first warming up and getting a feel for things. Once she was fitted with a prosthetic, she kept up with the training and competed in able body defense. Her father summed it up best. She's the epitome of it. Doesn't matter what bump in the road you hit, you can still make things work. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed the video who are some other disabled athletes that you know of who overcame adversity to succeed. Be sure to let us know in the comments below.